So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to Stratford. And by that I mean welcome to the urban East London Stratford rather than the rural Shakespearean Stratford. But this one's still okay. I've just gotten off the high-speed train up from my hometown in Folkestone which arrives into Stratford International Railway Station here. And once I've recorded this I'll be making my way across to the Docklands Light Railway Station which is just over there to make my way across to London City Airport for my flight today. Now London City Airport is a little different from other London airports in a number of regards. Firstly because it's actually in London unlike the four or is it even five other airports which have London in their name but are actually nowhere near. But the airport is different in a number of other ways too, so it is wise to set your expectations accordingly if you have a trip through the airport planned. I'm flying today on British Airways on their City Flyer subsidiary, and in a similar way, your expectation should be set a little differently for a flight of that kind, particularly if you have status with British Airways. So if you'd like to see what London City Airport is like and what my flight tonight on BA's City Flyer subsidiary on an Embraer is like, stick around! Hi, I'm Matt. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.4 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to see where I go next and perhaps get some inspiration for your next trip. So a short walk to the Stratford International DLR station. Many DLR stations don't have ticket barriers, so you'll have to remember to donk in and out. You may think that's a golden opportunity to save a few quid, but I'll advise against it as I've frequently seen tickets being checked on trains, and so giving yourself a friends and family discount is unlikely to work. The DLR network is a little confusing to the uninitiated, but all trains from Stratford International currently head to Woolwich Arsenal, which means that after nine stops you'll be at the airport. Driverless trains, so you can pretend to be the driver. You'll pass under the IFS, the formerly Emirates, cable car, which is probably the funnest way of crossing the Thames. So into London City Airport's DLR station. Down the escalators and it's a very short walk to the terminal. Don't forget to donk out again. There's a row of self-check-in kiosks on the approach to the terminal and this is the first clue that this is a very business oriented airport very business oriented. Some leisure destinations do creep into the schedules towards the weekend, including Ibiza and Mykonos, although even then they're the sort of party destinations that highly paid city types would typically bolt for for their weekends. I was hopelessly early as usual, so before going into the terminal I headed through the car park to a small area that does offer some views of the single runway. Not great views, but it was a nice day for some spotting. I'm on full zoom here, but you get the idea. So into the terminal, and it's small. This is pretty much the entirety of the downstairs check-in area. It offers some limited facilities including money exchange kiosks and a sandwich shop and there was a coffee shop outside on the walk from the station, but that's it. And this is the important thing to know about London City as it's currently configured. It's really small. In fact it's so small that airlines need you to arrive far closer to the departure time than they advise at any other airport. BA's only advice is to be there a minimum of 20 minutes before your departure. You certainly can arrive earlier, I certainly did, but as the passenger base is predominantly business travellers, most don't. And as they tend to have quite short journeys to get to the airport, they have a low risk of being delayed en route, which means they are able to cut things finer than would be the case at almost any other airport. I had checked in online and printed a boarding pass, and as I had no baggage to check, I headed straight upstairs to security. You might worry about lengthy security lanes derailing a just-in-time arrival strategy, 
but I had a little bit to do with City Airport's passenger flow technology in a past life, and a lot of time and money is spent on monitoring and managing passenger flows to get people through the airport quickly. To support a quick transit, the airport is rolling out the snazzy new scanners which allow you to leave stuff in your bags. I think I got lucky by hitting the lane serviced by the device they were trialling, so I was very quickly through, much quicker than a similar experience had been in Amsterdam recently. And through into the small departure area. It's larger than the check-in area downstairs, but it's still not huge, and I think the available space was even more diminished during my visit as building work is underway. I mentioned that London City is small as it's currently configured, and it has an ambitious expansion plan which will increase passenger capacity by 50%. There's no way of adding any more runways, but the existing runway could handle more flights if the terminal could handle more passengers. Its limited size is yet another reason why arriving two hours before departure is not advised. If every passenger on every flight did that, the place would be absolutely rammed. There are some bars and restaurants plus shops including a duty free, but there aren't any lounges. And this is the first reason why status holders need to temper their expectations for a transit of London City Airport, as there are no lounges, not even contract lounges. I believe there are plans to add status lounges as part of the expansion, but right now there's none. Another factor which inspires people to adopt a just-in-time strategy for arriving at the airport. It was really busy in the central part of the terminal for my early evening departure, but I was able to find a seat with a little bit of elbow room in a hallway to the gates that leads off the central area. One thing City Airport is good for, though, is plane spotting, even if the range of planes on display is a little narrow. The runway is slap bang in the middle of East London, so the airport operates under a number of constraints which balance the needs of the airport with the needs of local residents. Only planes that can achieve a 5.5 degree approach and can operate within strict noise limitations can operate here, which limits aircraft to those on this list. If you're a Boeing fan, go plane spot somewhere else. It's also really tight on the taxiway, so you get to see the extraordinary turning circle of the Embraers that are most commonly seen here. Right, enough about the airport, now let's talk about how BA City Flyer operations are different. Did I mention City was a business-heavy airport? Well, because there are so many premium flyers using the facility, priority boarding is only offered to gold card holders. Silver cards needs to wait. But that included me, so I was quickly off down the stairs and across the apron to the plane. Which on an evening like this is great, but it's not so much fun when it's raining. Front and rear boarding for this Embraer 190, but front stairs for me as I was in row 7. The next thing you may have noticed was that this was a 2-2 configuration throughout, and unlike Lufthansa and some other Euro airlines, BA doesn't seat just one person per seat pair in its business cabin. So if you fly on a business class ticket, the advertised benefit of an empty seat next to you won't apply. Very decent legroom though, 33 inches according to aerolopa.com, which is three more than you get in most of BA's short haul fleet. Otherwise, a fairly uninspiring seat layout. BA must have acquired this plane from somebody else, as there were overhead air vents. Cute portholes too. Oh, I just checked, and BA did acquire this plane from somebody else. It was originally operated by China Southern Airlines, so there you go. Doors closed, and after another one of those fantastic U-turns off the apron, it's a short roll to the runway. Then, one of the more exciting takeoffs you'll experience. Now I may get technical here, but the engines are spooled up to pretty much full beans with the anchors on. Then the brakes are released and you absolutely shoot off.
a quick rotation and that 5.5 degree climb kicks in as we go up and over Canary Wharf's skyscrapers. It was only a 45 minute flight to Dublin that night, but that was enough time for the other major difference in the City Flyer experience, which is that there is an in-flight service. Yes, you can still get a free beer on a BA flight in economy class in 2023. And it was really nice too. I really fancied a beer, but I believe a full bar was available. Plus, you get a snack. The captain has now switched on the fastened seatbelt signs as we will shortly be landing. The 45 minutes literally flew past and we were down into Dublin. I redeemed Avios for this trip and it cost me 4,750 of them plus £17.50. That's not the price BA offers you and wants you to accept, but it is the best value of the options offered. You're effectively buying 4,500 Avios for 0.38 of a P each, which is a good deal if you ask me. The rule of thumb is that whatever BA offers is likely to be the best option for them, not for you. So if you value an Avio at 1p, the option I took was the best value at £68, which I think is pretty good value for an international flight on a foolish service airline. Note that the BA's default option they offer you is indeed the worst option. I did briefly think about booking a seat in business class, which would have cost £42 more, but as I hope you've seen, the difference between business and economy on one of these flights is even more marginal than usual. There's no lounge, no empty seat, and only a minimal difference in in-flight catering, so for most people it's really not going to be worth the extra £42. And off into Dublin for an overnight stay at the Maldron Hotel by the airport before an early flight onwards the next morning. The Radisson Blue Hotel is better. So thanks for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Please comment. Have you ever flown through London City Airport? Would you consider it after watching this video? Please consider subscribing if you're new. And if you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly, I have a Patreon account, the link to which is in the description below. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.